Yo, what is up, Huan Yingui like David Biology. In this video, I'll be doing another revision for SPM 2020, this time regarding a topic of sex link inheritance from your Form 5, Chapter 5. Now, this is actually already the second revision video I'm doing for SPM 2020. The first was actually about menstrual cycle, whereby I did a two-part video for that topic. If you have missed that two videos and you're still not very pro yet, lah, okay, I'll put the link down in the description. You can go and watch it after when you're done with this. To understand the concept of sex link inheritance, first, we need to know what are sex link genes. So there are basically genes found in the sex chromosome, which are the female X chromosome and the male Y chromosome. And remember, only the X chromosome actually carries the sex link genes because as you can see, X chromosome is way larger than the Y chromosome. Now, assuming you already know your basics, all genes consist of a dominant allele represented by a capital letter or a recessive allele which is represented by the small letter. In our syllabus, right, dominant allele for sex link genes is always representing the normal trait, while the recessive allele is always representing the disease trait. For example, let's say over here capital H represents the dominant allele for normal and a small letter H represents the recessive allele for a sex link disease. By now, you should know already, male actually has XY chromosome in the sex chromosome. Since only the X chromosome can carry the sex link gene, right? So hence, giving males two different combinations of sex link inheritance, which as you can see, is the normal male and the male with disease. So for a normal male, right, its X chromosome actually carries the dominant allele, while for the male with the disease, its X chromosome actually carries the recessive allele. However, for female, it's a bit different since female has two X chromosomes, so both of the X chromosomes can actually carry the sex link genes, hence giving female a total of three different combinations for the sex link inheritance, which are the normal female, carrier female, and the female with the disease. For normal female, both of the X carries the dominant allele. For the carrier female, one X carries the dominant allele and the other carries the recessive allele. Now take note, this female actually does not have the disease because it has one dominant allele. However, one of the X actually carries the recessive allele. That's why it's called a carrier female because it still carries the disease. Therefore, this gene, this disease allele actually might be passed on to its children and the children might inherit whatever disease it carries. No? And for the female with disease, basically just both of the X chromosome carries the recessive allele. Now, due to the fact that only X chromosome carries the sex link genes, male actually have a higher chance of inheriting the sex link disease. For example, all it takes is just for the mother to be a carrier female in a marriage, and the sperm carrying the Y chromosome will definitely have a one out of two chance to fertilize the ovum with the recessive allele in it and therefore producing a male child with the disease. But for female, it takes both of the parents to have the recessive allele. Hence, the sperm carrying the X chromosome will then only have a one out of two chance to fertilize the ovum with the recessive allele in it. So this is the reason why female has lower chance of getting sex link disease because I need to have both parents carrying the recessive allele, which is actually something that occurs very rare. So that was our quick revision for sex link inheritance. So now let's do an example question. Oh. So actually quite a number of you don't know when the question is asking a sex link inheritance question and when it's not. Okay, so most of you all, when you all see there's like male or female, then you all will straight away come to the conclusion or oh, this is a sex link question and you all will straight away quickly write a x, y, x, x. But remember, not all genes are carried by the sex chromosome. So sometimes we don't have to write the x, 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 y. So for example, remember in our syllabus, there are only two types of sex link inheritance we learn, which is color blindness and of course, hemophilia. So in this question, they did mention color blindness is a sex link inheritance. So therefore, this question, we are going to use the x, 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 Y. But however, there are certain questions I see before whereby they actually include a sex link disease that we never learned in our syllabus. But don't worry, even though they, if they give us a type of disease that's not a sex link, right? Let's say, for example, they give you a butt pain, but obviously it's not a for example. Lah. They will definitely tell you that this disease is a sex link. Whenever they say it's a sex link, then you need to know you have to use the XY genes law. But for this question, even though they didn't say it's sex link, they say Color blindness is something we learn in our syllabus, so definitely this is a sex link question. No? 
So they say here, a normal male colorblind marries a woman who is colorblind. So the male is normal. So male, okay, no matter, first thing, no matter male is what female is what, right? You just write down X, Y, X, X first, which is the sex chromosome of the female. Law. So for male, normal, there's only one possibility. So colorblind, we're going to use big B and small b to represent. This is normal, this is the disease. Uh, for the colorblind female, is colorblind, so definitely both is small b. So for the schematic diagram, first we have to complete this process X, which whereby is a process of forming the gametes. So remember when gametes are formed, basically each of them only carry half of the genetic, genetic content of the parents. So therefore, one sperm will carry big X, big B, one sperm will carry Y, and for the ovum, same thing, they only will carry half of the genes, X small B, small B. So next, fertilization. So this sperm have a chance to fertilize with this ovum to give me X, big B, X, small B. This sperm have a chance to fertilize this ovum, also giving me X, big B, X, small B. And this sperm will fertilize this ovum, give me x small b y and this one will give me x small b y uh yeah always write the x first before the y so phenotype so if you don't know what is genotype genotype means the combination of genes the combination of allele phenotype is means the characteristics expressed by the genes by the alleles so x big b x small b is going to give me a carrier female same thing over here, carrier, female. And for the, the other two males, both of them are going to be colorblind male. Okay, I just write CB male. And as you can see, male will always have a higher chance of getting the disease. You can see, even though the mother has the disease, but both the daughter does not have the disease. But you can see both the son has it. So basically, we've done this, write the genotype for the parents. Name process X. So I didn't mention what is process X just now, but you can see process X is the process of forming gametes, process of forming sperm and ovum, and it's a process of whereby the genetic content becomes half. This is actually meiosis. All right, so here is meiosis. Write the gametes in the boxes provided in the diagram. So the gametes, we've done that. Name the Mendel's law involved in the inheritance above. So whenever you see only one pair of alleles, that is Mendel's first law. Mendel's second law will be have two one, like big B, big B, then if you have uh, big Y, small Y, like that. So that would be two pairs, that would be second. So this is definitely Mendel's first law. Explain the reason why. So Mendel's first law states that only one allele is carried in a gamut, which is something that we saw over here. See, one allele carried by one gamut because of meiosis, the gamut only carries one allele over here. That's what Mendel's first law means. Write the genotype and the phenotype of the offspring. We already done that. Genotype, phenotype. Now for our last question, the most important one, so they say here, what happens if a colorblind male marries a female carrier of a colorblind? And then what's the probability of the couple getting a colorblind son? So what you can do here actually is uh, draw your own schematic diagram. But of course, if you put enough, actually you don't have to. But I'm just going to show you the steps anyways. So colorblind male means the father is going to have X for B, Y. And carrier female means the mother is going to have X, big B, X, small B. So the first step, meiosis. Draw out the possible gametes it can produce first. So father basically we have two kinds of sperm. One is X, small B. The other is Y. And mother's ovum, one is going to carry X, big B. One is going to carry X, small B. Now since the question only wants son, so we actually can ignore the sperm carrying X, small B. Because to produce a son, a male child, it has to be the sperm carrying a Y chromosome that actually fertilize the ovum. Then you can produce a child that's carrying a Y chromosome and therefore producing a son. So, this sperm 
basically have two possible ovum it can fertilize with, which is X big B. So when sperm fertilizes this ovum, it will give me a child with X big B Y, which is normal. And if this sperm fertilizes the other one, the X small B, it's going to give me X small B Y, which is then the colorblind male. So you can see basically here, there are two possible ovum that the Y chromosome sperm can fertilize. And out of these two, one of them is color black. So hence, the probability here is 50%. So how are we going to explain this? So you actually can start from here. It's because there are two possible ovum the Y chromosome can fertilize. Hence, we can say here, Carrier female produces ovum with chromosome X big B and X small b. And out of these two, only when the sperm with the chromosome Y fertilizes the chromosome X small b, then only I can produce a colorblind son. So, th so this is how I actually explain it, because I have two types of ovum the Y chromosome can fertilize. Fertilize this one will be normal. Fertilize this one will get a color black. So it's basically one of two, therefore 50%. So whenever a question asks, how does a child inherit something from their parents? First, always list down the possible gametes that they can produce. And then number two, mention what kind of gametes were fertilized, what kind of gametes to give you the phenotype that the question is asking for. So second thing is fertilization. So in this case, the question wants color black. So I just mentioned who fertilized, who will give me a color black child. And that is it for this video. I hope that I made you understand better regarding sex link inheritance if you actually have problems before this law. And also, please remember to follow my Instagram page, David Biology. It's because I'm actually doing two free live sessions before your bio paper through Zoom, whereby in these two live sessions, I'll actually be covering two different state papers on the 11th of March and on the 15th of March. Okay, the details are actually in my Instagram page. So go, 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 follow and also subscribe my channel now. Okay, so this is David Biology and I'll catch you guys in the next.